So Tehran, thank you so much for talking with me today. Yeah, you kind of made me do this. It's like this. <laughs> I love how you thank me for talking. I've been bad. I know I've been badgering you. Yeah, you're like, yo, we're gonna do this. Like you didn't even look. Usually the Persian way is to talk off and ask. You're not even asking nicely. You're like, "Ted on. We're doing this." Like, do well, you're doing it. <laughs> well, the kidding. thing is, so we recorded a raising name Renee's episode about you growing up half Iranian, and you said this one part of a poem in there. You said, "Kesi ke khabe You know that quote. What was uh, the quote? It's like a, it's like a Persian saying, "Kesi ke khab, khab has, bidar bidar That's right. You said that, and you explained it, and I've been getting emails about this. Seriously, several emails of people saying that was such a nice quote. Like it really made me think. Uh, you know what Tehran said was really interesting. And so I've been doing this poetry series, and uh, and I, I wanted to add some new voices to this series. And so you were one of the few, first people that came to mind. I was like, he has a poetic way of thinking about things, uh, so it might be interesting to talk to you. So I'm excited to see what we come up with. Um, I appreciate you, Layla. Hindune, hindune zira bagal gozeshtam mi deyani chi? Like a uh, bladder. Yeah, it's putting a. It's it the the little translation is putting a watermelon under someone's sure. someone's arm. Basically, you're just like giving them something that's very big. <laughs> but it's not expensive but it's yes. like it's like very sweet it's a great joke that's what you're doing you're like okay you, let me add you to that me, you got me yeah I'm okay let me add to it i also yeah. think that like in persian poetry so so you suggested that we do shamdu which is what we're going to do spoiler alert and i was reading about him uh he was not only a poet he was a journalist he's an activist he's very involved in the culture of iran very much and, so. and i also see you as this type of person too i feel like But you studied law, right? Yeah, yeah. So I studied economics and law, and and now I do comedy, which is basically the same thing. Right. And in <laughs> listening to you, I, when I listen to you on the podcast with Maz Jabrani or listen to your comedy, I can see that you're drawing from all of these into into your work, into your art. And I feel like that's a that's a <laughs> that's no, another hand carry, in I can't carry this many hands in the door. <laughs> that's yeah, another hand in it's, exp- it's heavy, bro. I need yeah. To calm down. So But, yeah, me... I appreciate it because I, you know, Layla, you're honestly one of my favorite people. You're this like self autodidactic person who's like self taught yourself a lot of things when you didn't right. have to. Growing up in America, neither one of us had to ex- be extremely Persian or, or Iranian totally. or immerse ourselves in understanding. It's not just being in the culture; it's actually understanding the culture, why things are done the way they're done, or why people say the things they say, and the history. So many Iranians. Uh, just think that because they're Iranian, they know. They don't. Right. We right. all should study. Studying is something we should all do. Educating ourselves on our culture, our heritage, should be a very important part of all of our lives. Definitely, definitely. And the goal of this series is to make poetry more accessible to more people, either people like us who have grown up here, or uh, people from other cultures that want to learn about Persian poetry. Um, it's very hard to find online or anywhere uh, about Persian poetry, unfortunately. So, so I'm excited about doing this. Um, so, can you tell me a little bit about what was the role of poetry in your upbringing? Did your father read you a lot of poetry, or did he? Was he like most Iranians, just spouting off Masnavi all the time? Yeah, no. My fa- first of all, my father and my amme, my aunt on my dad's side, are the kings and queens of of Iranian phrases and sayings. So. I heard all the zarbo masal, all these sayings and phrases and colloquialisms we use. They were the kings and queens of this. From mush tu surakh nemiraf jaru be don bish mibas, which is like the concept of a mouse trying to fit in the hole, but it also it barely fit in the hole, but it also tied a broomstick to its tail, which means like if you don't really get in somewhere, don't do too much. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. don't do don't do the most. You're barely getting in here. Like let's. Let's tone that down. So I, I learned all of these, like Archie Maimun Zeshtar, Bazish Bishtar, like the uglier the monkey, the more it, it's a, a goofball or plays around, which oh. is basically like whenever someone's, it's an expression used if someone is unknowledgeable about something or uh, shouldn't be speaking on something, they're the ones who speak the loudest and they talk the most, which oh. is something we see in modern day exponentially, right? So definitely. 
Persian poetry was a must in my home simply because my father has decided, you know, he was going he was going to be the next he was going to be the next uh Khashoyar Shah. <laughs> you know, he was going to be the next Tirush, you know, whatever in my home at least he conquered uh-huh. us. He con- his Persian empire conquered the family. So we had um a lot of poetry from Hafez. I had to read the Shahnameh. I had like all these things wow. are part of my Iranian learning and it's not like my dad's a big professor or teacher but when it came to me and honestly i know that he didn't read a lot of these things before (laughs) me either like he was just one he was the teacher who was one page ahead of me and wow that i learned yeah well that's good (laughs) well so you i i asked you to choose three poems um and so today we're gonna do the first of the poems that you chose and it was a poem by Sham Lu. So why Sham Lu? What what do we know about Sham Lu? What what so draws you to him? I have I have there's classics, and here's the thing. Uh, you'll see from the different poems, and I hope everyone stays tuned and catches the other poems because they're amazing. But Sham Lu, Ahmad Sham Lu is not only not only was he one of Iran's most prolific poets, but he was so immersed in Iranian culture and uh, basically a thermometer or a gauge of everything that's going on all the way until Khoda Biyomar Zatish, he passed in the year 2000. So this is a man who's been there since 47, basically lived through two, almost three revolutions and decided to conjure up all his creativity to write about these experiences in every single way possible, whether it's journalistically, uh, poetically, uh, or as an author, he decided to make sure that we should never forget these experiences on a variety of subjects, love, life, politics, principles, philosophy. So it's just that profoundness is something that draws me to this guy. Right, Plus and- he looked like vegan. Plus he had this like vegan <laughs> yeah. look like, you know, when he was young, he got all the <laughs> girls with his shamblu-ness. Like he was like, man shamblu. Definitely. Like, okay, bro. All right. And he had this amazing deep voice too. We have yeah. to we have to say yeah, that's what I'm saying. Beautiful voice. And so just a little biography. So he, he was born in 1925 in Rash, and he lived until uh in he died in 2000 um after a few years of health problems. And so, like you said, he went through a few revolutions. He was uh put in jail, he wrote really um he was a journalist for a while, so he wrote about politics. He was part of the Tude Party. Um, and so he did live through a lot of turmoil uh, in the Islamic Republic. And he stayed there. He didn't leave. Uh, for a few years after the Islamic Revolution happened, he did go a little silent. But he merged after that and did tours of Europe. Uh, he did tours of the US. He was nominated for a Nobel Prize in 1984. Um, and yeah. yeah, and I and I was actually watching this TED talk that this woman who knew him personally did, um, and she was saying, you know, he was nominated for this Nobel Prize. Like, how many of you know of this guy? And like, nobody raised their hands. And so I think that's a shame that, you know, <laughs> you do. No, I know this was an American I'm, audience. I'm saying I am an American audience. That's what <laughs> I want people to understand. I am an American audience. So uh, the same way that we know in America of Shakespeare's work. And, and it's not always just, um, it's not only just American authors, we know about, you know, uh, Marquez and all these other writers as well, we should know we should. about Sham Lu. We really should. And so he was, he was the person who's credited most. He, there was a, um, a poet named Nima Yushij, who st- was the first one to break away from classical Persian poetry. We all know Saadi, Hafez. By the way, they're all the same. Listen, I, I think it's very interesting that people think uh, Persian poetry has just metamorphed into this new, it's basically, it's basically in the same. Definitely. <laughs> they, they, as much as I love Iranians and they're amazing with their imagery and their creativity, thoughtful they're not big on change <laughs> like if something works <laughs> like the miniature painting works yeah. let's all keep miniature painting fashion right. you need it's all the same way oh and <laughs> only from kashan i don't even want it from anywhere else it's poetry true. is all like huff has made it let's that's how we all do it <laughs> it's true it's true but they had some very strict rules that they were adhering by and he was the one who really 
um, popularized free verse. And so him and I guess Foto Farosad are the two most uh, famous. Well, we're going to go to next. That's like, that's my girl. Like that's... Okay, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I think, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like Foto Farosad is a lot more in the like com current lexicon of in the United States than Shamlu is even, right? Or is that you know not? What? Both of them, I don't think that I could go to my homies and be like, <laughs> hey, what are you listening to? And they'd be like, I don't know, uh, Tupac. And I'd be like, well, you're not listening to... Yeah, yeah. it's a good song. point. I think I have one American friend who somehow discovered Battle of the Zone, and so I'm just like, oh, she made it. Yeah, no. <laughs> she See, made it the one. But here's the thing I always advocate to other Iranians is don't wait for quote unquote Western acceptance. Right. That's not what we should be waiting for. That shouldn't be the meter of success. When something's important or valued to us, then everyone else will also learn to value it as well. And that's True. that's what we should be inspiring, where these poets are so important to us and in our individual lives. And it's things that we quote that people and, and it resonates with others, just the same way that I simply came across with the the hub saying, basically the sleep saying. Right. And it resonated with people because it's about universality. It's about being able to connect and realizing that no matter where in the world we are, we all have so many similar experiences, mm -hmm. so many similar opinions and wants, desires, needs. We're basically so alike, much more alike than we are different. And this is one of the ways to explore that. Definitely. And on that same note, uh, when we were trying to schedule this, you know, it's right now as we're recording, it's October 2020. Uh, the United States is going through a really difficult transition period, a really difficult time. And I feel it was it was very comforting for me to read about Shamdu at this time because he went through all this. He wrote beautiful poetry about it. But he, you know, we feel like everything is just crazy right now. He went through the most crazy times and he- Difficult for the United States. We should clarify, I difficult know. for the United- Like, honestly, we still have hot water. We still have electricity. People are still eating for the most part. So like, important to remember. People, we, we love, this is what I say is like first world problems. Like, no, my political party's right. Like, yo, we can kind of figure this out. It's a conversation. It's, it's a totally conversation. right. Yeah, it's, it's totally right. Well, okay, so let's get into the poem. So um, as we have done in the past, uh, if we could, let's just read the entire poem. Um, mm -hmm. And the poem is called Raz. And oh. Raz is the word for a secret. So Baman Razibud, that is the poem. And um, so Tehran's going to read the whole thing. This, These are intended for either people who can speak Persian already and understand it, or people that do not speak any at all. So just listen to Tehran read it, uh, get the feeling of it. And then we'll go over it maybe four lines at a time and translate it, do a rough translation, literal translation, and talk about the meaning. Well, so before go. we start, I do want yes. to say different things. First of all, I am not a professional in Persian poetry. <laughs> so please, these are all opinions expressed by, by Tehran. Do not take them as fact. That's number one. Number two, I will do my best to read the Farsi. Not only is it in small print, but uh, you know, it's written in Farsi. So I'm going to do my best to read. If I do pronounce something incorrectly, please don't jump at me. I'm doing my best. The poem, and I'm going to do this in my Shamlu sexy voice. I'm going to try. You know how <laughs> Persian Persians, when they speak officially, is it changes the tone. Salam. با من راضی بود که به کوه گفتم با من راضی بود که به چا گفتم تو را راه دراز به اسب سیاه گفتم بی کس و تنها به سنگای را گفتم با راز کنه از را رسیدم حرفی نروندم حرفی نروندی اشکی فشوندم اشکی فشوندی لبامو بستم از چشام لولی <laughs> that was really nice 
I feel like I could say I got, but you know what? It sounds like this is like real rap. For oh, man, Rosy Boot, to be a cool golf down. For oh, man, Rosy Boot, to be a golf down. Two dollars, the dollars, the ass to see your golf down, the kiss, but be castle town hall, the sango, you're all golf down. Like you could really, if I had a, if I had a Kanye beat, this would be a hit. This would be a hit. <laughs> Well, so there is a, a song that's um, that someone named Batty sang after this. So, so we'll link to that too, so that people can listen to it. Um, it's not Kanye, but <laughs> I thought you were gonna refer because you know Kanye used the Kurushiafmai song for Nas beat. No, you've never heard this song. I mean, maybe I, I maybe I didn't realize. Kanye, you need to check this out. Uh -huh. um, Kanye has a song with Nas who's clearly like one of the best, you know, a legendary American rapper. They have yeah. a song, Adam and Eve, and uh -huh. they, you, they sampled uh, Kudos Yafmai. Wow. And definitely a song that I feel like everyone should check out. I think that this is off topic, but I think that Nas is related to the Shahidi family. Yeah, actually, right? Karen, okay. Karen Shahidi and Nas yes. are cousins. So okay, that's, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a so real then, So yeah, then the maybe. connection, you don't even know. Persian connections are every Michael Jackson's nieces. She, he is uh, like uh, Stevana, who's Michael Jackson. Yeah, who's <laughs> half black, half Persian. He's got like several that. nieces that are uh, black and Persian. Actually, the Marleys, oh. Bob Marley's grandchildren are black and Persian. You know? Wow, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. no idea. We get everywhere. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> it's because we have the Shamlu vo voice, and the women have the yeah. Layla appeal. So we just we work our ways in. We get oh, angry. God. Yeah. We procreate. Wow. <laughs> okay, so let's go over this poem. So it's a great poem. It's very simple language. So this is another thing that Shamanu is known for is to get the um, very common imagery, common simple language to talk about these really deep concepts, which of course all poets do. Um, but let's look at the first four lines and we'll roughly translate them. So Boman Rozibud. So with me there was a secret. Boman Rozibud kebe kuhkoftam. So there was a secret with me and I told the mountain. So there was a secret and I told the well. So these are two different, very different bodies of things, a tall thing, a short thing, an inanimate objects <laughs> or a nature, I guess. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like I, I contained the secret, but I, I, I was dying with it. I had to tell someone I'm telling exactly. the mountains. And I'm telling the well. I'm telling things that can't tell, but they're out there. I'm putting it out in the universe. I totally. am letting nature know that this is this is it. This is what exactly. I'm telling. Exactly. And it was with me. Like the, that's Baman Razi would like this thing was yeah. with me. Like it yeah. I didn't have a secret. The secret was with me. It was mm -hmm. like encompassing me. Um and and this, you know, obviously. This right, like it has a lot of um, rhyming in this poem too, which I Actually, really like. They kind of just use the same word over and over. <laughs> but, which is like a very yeah. Persian thing to it's do true. when they're rhyming. They just kind of has them, mass them. Yeah, you know, it's true. Must them, must them. It's kind of per Farsi as a language tends to rhyme. That's why when we speak, it sounds like we're we're singing. Salam, <laughs> Kubi uh, 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 uh. It's true. Shahaba, shahaba. <laughs> Chahaba, chahaba. Like Farsi is a language. It's true. It's true. Um, do you want to read the next four lines and give a kind of rough translation? Uh, sure. I mean, the Aspis Yogoftam, be castle tan hall, be sangoye Yogoftam. So he's basically saying, um, in, on the long road, on the long road or uh, long journey in a way, uh, he told a black, black horse, a black horse, meaning uh, telling, you know, this royal object, this, this, you know, animal, this strong, beautiful beast, right? Mm -hmm. And then alone, be castle tan ha, alone. It's like that whole alone and afraid, but it's just alone yeah. with no one, in, with loneliness, with, without anyone there. Yeah. I told the secret rocks. I told these these rocks too. I told the, the pathway. So it's like important to note what he's he's and clearly at this point, 
the secret can be anything, but we're starting to feel that it must be a love. It must be an energy of some sort. That's what we're getting that sense of. Maybe it's his voice when he reads it. Maybe it's his voice. <laughs> it's everything he talks about. Like Shamlu could be like, I have to go to the bathroom and it sounds like he's in love. <laughs> like, why I but I'm Bishosh. You're like, whoa, <laughs> Shamlu has to go Bishosh. We need to go Bishosh. And it's like maybe, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I love that that B Kasotan, huh? That's exactly. so dramatic. B Kas, like it means without anyone. Yeah. So, but it's even it's, deeper without anyone like Farsi is, is such yeah. a deep language right yeah it's hard to translate it is cast cast is just a being so without any beings you're just getting this like i mean i'm just imagining this person with these mountains like not seeing anyone for days he sees this black horse but even that is just such a like desolate elusive desolate. yeah desolate. Exactly. yeah desolate. it's just because persians are so dramatic they're so we're dramatic, dramatic people like oh right. oh 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 oh, oh, right. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and i'm like bubba what's to my dad i'll be like bubba what's wrong oh 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 no oh no <laughs> bubba what's wrong there's my pencil where's your pencil <laughs> this is over a pencil we can just get you another pencil right but right I want that pencil <laughs> without that pencil i and be Castle Town Hall. Like, sounds, like, sounds like sounds like the up. beginning of a poem. It is. <laughs> you need to explore that sometime. Yeah. But here, so so to me, this is like, I mean, he brings up the rock, the sang hoi ro, the mm. stones on the path. That seems like he's at rock bottom. And so there, there the, the poem kind of um, reaches a turning point. So now all of a sudden, the next line is, go ahead. Baro, baro Kohne as raw the sida harfi narunda harfi narundi. So let's go back to this boroze kohne. What is kohne? Kohne is used. It's um, weary, yeah. like worn, like uh, weathered. Kohne. weathered. Yeah. That's it, weathered. So he's weathered the, the secret. So the, the secret has not changed, right? He's just been like, telling it and telling it and telling it until like he what is that um saying where you say like that's my name don't wear it out don't wear it out yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah so there's my saying <laughs> um so he's worn it out by telling all these inanimate objects and this horse and this just all these different things and, so, it, but, and also we have this saying in farsi that does not translate to english Orde. Orde is when your like heart is full. Yeah. Orde. And we have this concept of like, like let go of this, this desperation, this depression, this suppression, this oppression, this regression, any shun in your heart, you need to just let it out. Right. And totally. so it reminds me, it conjures that concept of like, yo, I just need to let this out, but I can't. Right. 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 And then as Roh Residam, I arrived from the path. Yeah. I like that a lot. So he he reaches his destination. So so there's this like path that he's been going down, just telling everyone, telling everyone, talking, 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 talking. But then all of a sudden he reaches his de destination and then he stops talking. He has he doesn't speak because now it's awkward. Now it's something like if he says it, it's too real. If he does it it's too real we've all been in that situation and by the way as raw to see them we say that for everything don't take it like oh i've completed the journey of my life i have found myself we say that when we come back from 7-eleven <laughs> like, yes that's, it's true that's what i mean when i say dramatic persian people right and that's why i love right. it so much so as raw to see them harfi narundam i didn't even drive i didn't drive the conversation i didn't like i didn't bring this up i didn't uh, it, it, I didn't extol the concepts that have been weighing on me so heavy. Right. Nothing. And then it's harfi narundi, which means you also didn't, you didn't say anything. You didn't bring anything up. Because in Farsi, am, whenever something ends with an M, for the most part, it's referring to me. And then when it's E, it's for the most part referring to the other, you, whoever right. the other person is. And Farsi, which I think is a beautiful concept, is a gender neutral language. So there is no uh, masculine and feminine. There is no he or she. So I can literally not know if the person I'm speaking to is a male or female. Mm. 
mm -hmm. uh, I, by just speaking. And yes. that was meant by design, by the way. I want to remind people that in ancient Persia, men and women were completely equal. It was actually one of the tenets of not only uh, Persian culture, but of Zoroastrianism, the original religion of the Persian Empire, the concept of good words, good thoughts, good deeds, that whole thing. And a lot of uh, later uh, Abrahamic religions derive many of their ideologies from Zoroastrianism out of all of the major religions of the time, including mm. the Egyptians and the Babylonians uh, and the Mesopotamians. So they utilize the ideas of paradise, angels, God, uh, the devil, heaven and hell. All of these concepts actually come from the, the Zoroastrian religion, which is the major religion of the Iranian, uh, of Persian empire at the time. Even the three wise men that visit Jesus are mm -hmm. three Zoroastrian priests. They're right. magis. Peter Moran or Zoroastrian priest. So there is a lot of connections mm -hmm. of Western civilization and especially ancient Persia. But the concept of not having a masculine and feminine is, yeah. is beautiful to me. And I love it. And you really, you have to go out of your way in Persian language to specify like, oh, I'm talking to a woman or I'm talking to a man. It's very awkward. It's like not something that you do. And so it changes the way we think about people for sure. It should, and except we also go out of our way not to tell people when we're talking to a man or woman. Like, <laughs> if I have a if I have a girl let, friend, it's like, is she a girl space friend or girlfriend? Because it's like, right. oh, do stochtar it? It's like, whoa, 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 do stam it? Dochtar it? Do stam friend? Dochtar means girl. Like, you have to space them out, and we kind of don't ever bring it up. Like, I might be married for like five years before oh, yeah. I call my family. Like, Definitely. Uh, these kids, I don't know where they came from. I've <laughs> never had sex. I have no idea. No, Definitely. Me? No, 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 no. Well, that's a whole, know. that's a whole different podcast. We'll, we'll get into that. I'm going to write that down for future subjects to explore. <laughs> I get into everything. Whenever you have a podcast, we can go anyway. <laughs> okay. So, so now let's, let's reach the last four lines where we've really picked up the pace at this point. So it's like reached this this point where there he's facing or he she is facing this other person. They're just not talking. Then what happens? Ashki fishundam, ashki fishundi, labamo bastam as chesham fundi. Sheesh! Talk about a shah bait. Do you know what a shah bait is, Layla? No, 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 I don't. Okay. I so a Shah Bait is a king verse. Basically, it's the most powerful verse in any poem. And Hafez is infamous and famous for having Shah Baits. There are these lines that just stick out, right? Mm -hmm. And as Chesham Khundi, Labam Bastam, as Chesham Khundi. That's such a powerful Oof. verse. It's so strong. And we'll get into the meaning. So Ashki Feshundam, Ashki Feshundi. Layla, please. So you let out a tear or tear, tears or a tear. Is Feshundam more of like an outpouring or is it just like a tear? I don't, I'm not sure. See, that's the, that's the dramatic part, right? So technically speaking, we're thinking that it's a, but it could be a pouring, but no, 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 no. And this, it could be literally a single tear, like a single, single tear is the storm, right? Right, that's, right. That's how powerful the imagery is. Right. And then, and then the other person who we're at this point assuming is a significant other um, and given uh, Shamlu's propensity for dating multiple women and being married three times, we're going to assume it's, it's a woman speaking to also let out a tear. Like, I understand. It's a, it's a empathetic tear. It's the we're sharing this connection without speaking tear. We haven't spoken right. yet. And right. then they've just been, he's just been talking, 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 talking. And at this point... La bomo basta. I close my lips and then as chesham mm. hundi. You read it so, in my eyes. Exactly. Like it was so prevalent that you could just, it, it was exuding from my essence and my being. And you were able to read from my eyes, which is something we also say in Farsi as cheshmat hunda, as cheshmat malumbu. Right. So as cheshmat malumbu means like it was aware, it was apparent from your eyes. We read into the eyes. The eyes are the window to the soul. Another very Persian concept. So here you have like, I could tell by your eyes what you were meaning to say and do. In this case, it's it's love and a fight in a co combination in a way. 
right? Yes. So that's the interpretation of the meaning. It's like, here we are in this moment right. of joy and sorrow, basically asking for forgiveness and asking to reciprocate love. Right. Okay. Double edged that like you said, like that concept of Ogde, it wasn't something that this person kept inside. They did deal with it and they, they dealt with it on their own way, just walking, telling, no, telling, no, no, telling. No, no. They dealt with it in the most Persian way where they told <laughs> anything that didn't count or couldn't talk about it or give advice. And they, they basically, they, they like yelled it and it could be because it had to be a secret, right? So this, right. Has to be a secret. this, is, this is unrequited love. This is love where it may not be possible for them to reciprocate physically or even emotionally, but it exists. And that's what, what the key is. But they did the Persian thing of like, not really dealing with it, right? Like, oh, I dealt with it, but you just punched a hole in the wall. Like you didn't <laughs> actually deal with it in the way you're supposed to, which is communicate with one another. But it was right. unsaid, it was unspoken love. And it yeah. exists. And it could be because these two people came from, at the time, different class levels or different families that didn't, it, the Romeo and Juliet or, different the you know aladdin and jasmine whatever the situation it may be it may simply be unrequited love as well it could be but also i think that that whole like saying as the i think that's a big clue in it if it was something that this person did have to deal with you know uh, I, I was listening to something where it said like the truth will eventually come out and if you don't deal with the truth at sure. some point it eventually like ruins you you know and i think like in our culture in the american culture it's a lot about like talking to each other and like figuring things out and you know this whole like um, i don't know working out things between people but maybe uh maybe this is a secret at Roz that needed to just be worked out within this person you know maybe it was some sort of like dark thing that they had to deal with on their own and by just talking about it over and over again it like took the legs away from this from the secret or he cheated who knows yeah who exactly knows? Who knows? He just cheated <laughs> and he's like baby forgive me and he's like, oh, it's like i told them oh. i told the black horse yeah, like, i told the black the, of course i told the black horse <laughs> what? it was a black horse it was in it was a dark horse it was a black horse. Right. It was, i know what i did i told them I told the mountain. <laughs> what do you mean? I told. Did you tell the well? Did you tell the well? Because I told the well. Yeah. I told the well. What more right. did you want me to do? You want me to tell your sister? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's too much. But overall, I mean, it's a poem that has a lot of different interpretations. Uh, again, it's like easy to understand. Anyone can relate to it. I'm sure we we've all had this secret that we've gone, you know, we've worn out our shoes going walking around. To, the, the village trying to to deal with this within ourselves you so want to know that... what what this makes me think in the modern day what it's is like, that see you're different because you're you're married like you have a whole really this is like in my life like i didn't post you on instagram but i told the mountain <laughs> i told <laughs> i told right. i told the well uh -huh. i told the dark horse i told the horse <laughs> A black horse. I told oh, the rocks. I told the rocks like the yeah. pathway. I told the pathway. I was alone. <laughs> when you're not there, I was alone. And it's like, but I won't post you on Instagram. Like, post you on Instagram? No, no, no. Relax. I don't want to tell the other girls. I just want to make sure that you know it means something to me. Look, cry, tear. Come on. <laughs> let's uh, let's Netflix and chill. What are we doing? <laughs> That sounds like, I mean, Shamdu only made it to 2000. So that would, that analogy would just really elude him, I think, at this point. I don't know. He was a forward thinking man. I mean, you don't just get nominated for Nobel Prizes. Like, that's a, <laughs> maybe he saw this coming. He definitely had tendencies. So I, and I do like have to say, one of the things that I know about Shamdu is he had this great, he was married three times, but he had this great love of his life uh, near the end of his life who he was with for what, 17 years, I think? Yes. They were married for a long time. And uh, she, in the end, he had a lot of health problems. So she was like nursing him all the time. But um, he, th there's this like great love of Aida and Shamlu that he. Yeah, and actually it was very, it was a very controversial um, marriage at the time because I, I believe she was Armenian. Right. And her Christian family didn't accept him being Muslim, which could be like very meaningful to this, is that they didn't. That's right. 
her family didn't accept him and he'd also he was older he'd been married twice it was a whole thing especially in in that time it wasn't like you know it, it was uh, like in the 60s so there was still a lot of differences than now and and you know that love lasted until his till his death so right yeah. right hey well cool well i think that's that's good unless there's any final thoughts uh I think that was a great poem to start with. Um, like we said, we have two other poems that we're going to talk about in the future. And those are more classic poems. Uh, so this is our modern poem. There's a lot of good vocabulary to learn here. It's a short poem, so it's easily memorized, which is another goal of these lessons. And other than that, Tehran, thank you so much. That was a lot oh, of fun. Thank you. Actually, Persian poems in general are meant to be memorized, which is by design. And I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. get into that, especially when we sp start speaking about Hafez. Uh, yeah. simply because that's where his name even came from and why at the time. So we have so much more. Thank you, Layla, for having me on your show. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And actually, so, so for the other ones, basically to tell you, Tehran, what I do is after this, this is the introductory lesson. After this, I'll produce maybe three more lessons where I go over this line by line, teach some words and phrases that go along with each, with, uh, with you know, these, there's a lot of good vocab to know here. Um, and then uh, the students send us videos of them reciting these poems. Oh, so, wow. I can't wait yeah. to see that. That's so, so fun. It's a lot of fun. We've had some really good videos in the past. Um, and so I will be sure to keep you updated on that. Thank so. you. I can't wait for the remixes. Yeah, the remixes. <laughs> exactly. Maybe thank we can you. get Kanye to do it. I'm telling <laughs> you right now, that's how it works. Anyway, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Yes, until next time. <laughs>